and a very good morning to you all. So let me please introduce myself. Uh, I'm Siban Sharana, researcher BIDS, currently working as National Strategic Planning Specialist for College Education Development Program, and I will be facilitating the dis discussion, which will go on for the next one and a half hour. So let me welcome you to today's seminar titled uh, Prospects of Bangladeshi Product in Chinese Market, How to Realize the Potential of Preferential Treatment jointly organized by Bangladesh Export Promotion Bureau EPB and Bangladesh China Chamber of Commerce and Industries. As we all know that Bangladesh provides utmost importance to its economic and trade relation to the neighboring countries and regional friends like China, and the trade and economic relationship between these two countries have been stronger in recent years. China has allowed uh, duty-free access for 97% of its tariff line to Bangladeshi products. And under this initiative, more than 8,000 Bangladeshi products enjoy zero tariff facilities in China. Still, uh, the bilateral trade between the two countries is highly inclined towards China. Uh, in financial year 2020, uh, out of um, USD 12 billion bilateral trade between these two countries, Bangladeshi export accounted less than USD $1 billion. So therefore, we can understand how timely the topic is, and it will be a real game changer if the Bangladeshi products have the potential of Chinese market. So therefore, I thank once again to EPB and BCCI for choosing this timely topic of discussion. And um, let me give you an overview of today's webinar. Uh, this webinar will be, uh, it was supposed to be chaired by Vice Chairman of EPB, but unfortunately, Sir uh, couldn't attend the webinar. But um, on behalf of Sir, we have the DG of EPB, Mr. Mahbubu Zaman, who will chair today's webinar. And we are honored to have Mr. Mahbubu Rahman, I'm sorry, Mr. Mahbubu Rahman, DG yes. EPB among us. And uh, we are honored to have His Excellency Mahbubu Zaman. Sir, Honorable Ambassador of Bangladesh to China as the guest of honor of today's webinar. The keynote paper of today's webinar will be presented by Dr. Mahfuz Kobi, Research Director, BIS. And after his presentation, we will hear from the three experts, Ms. Mr. M. S. Siddiqui, Dr. M. Abu Yusuf, and Dr. Nazneen Ahmed. So uh, just before we start i have just one or two housekeeping notes that we have uh, 10 minutes of open question answer discuss discussion session after we hear from our guest of honor uh, mm -hmm. so therefore uh, the participants who have joined us if you have any questions or queries to our participants i will ask you to please wait for some time we will come back to you or you can just uh, write it down in the chat box of the zoom platform i can read it on behalf of you so uh, without wasting any time, we have uh, we are delayed a little bit. So I ask um, Mr. Al Mamun Rindha, Joint Secretary General, Bangladesh China Chamber of Commerce and Industries, to please uh, uh, take the floor and um, convey your welcome remark. Thank you, Sivan Shahana. Uh, let's start. Uh, distinguished guest of honor, His Excellency Mr. Mahbub Zaman, Bangladesh Ambassador to People's Republic of China, uh, uh, Mr. Mahbub Rahman, DGEPB, and uh, the keynote paper presenter, panelists, dignitaries, and all the friends from media and respected officials from EPB and the members of Bangladesh China Chambers, uh, Chamber of Commerce and Industries, and participants. Ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu Alaikum and good morning. I would like to take the opportunity to welcome you all on today's webinar, Sourcing Bangladesh 2021, virtual edition, titled as Prospects of Bangladeshi Products in Chinese Market and How to Realize the Potential Preference Treatment, being jointly organized by Bangladesh China Chamber of Commerce and EPP. Bangladesh and China traditionally have been enjoying a friendly bilateral relationship for thousands of the year. In recent years, the development of Bangladesh-China relation has been promoted onto the first track. China has maintained its position as the world's largest manufacturing country for 11 consecutive years with the industrial added value uh, reaching 4.84 trillion. The bilateral trade between two countries almost takes a single way traffic, which is tilting heavily for China. And the trade gap keeps increasing because of less 
realization of utilizing the unbelievable preferential tariff package granted by China in uh, recent days. In 2018 and 19, the value of the bilateral trade between two countries was about 15 billion, with Bangladesh export to China being less than 1 billion. As the pandemic hit the worldwide trade flows, both exports and imports from China declined, and the trade between two countries declined to 12 billion in 2019-2020. But the export to China declined by 28% to reach 600 million approximate in 2019-2020, while the import slumped by 15% to 11.4 billion. China accounts more for one-fifth of Bangladesh total import, although its share in Bangladesh export is very small, just around 2%. In 2020, uh, and 2021, export to China have increased slightly to 680 million. At the same time, import from China have risen to 13.55 billion. Dear guests, although China is one of the largest importer in the world, Bangladesh presence in the market is very negligible. Bangladesh should target and proactively seek options to expand its market share in the Chinese market. China should also help Bangladesh in further expanding its export and reduce the bilateral trade deficit at a reasonable level. If Bangladesh can achieve 1% of the share of the Chinese market, the export earning from Bangladesh uh, from China alone could be in the range of 20 to 25 billion USD. This should be the target of Bangladesh-China cooperation in upcoming decade. Uh, which means 2021 to 2030. I can assure you that, and on this, uh, I can assure you that there is no trade barrier from Chinese side. They are really welcoming Bangladeshi product and services in Chinese market with a warm heart. We have been informed from EPB about the scarcity of CO form, but we uh, uh, contacted both the embassies and we uh, have been informed that CO forms are available in uh, both ways, traditional ways and uh, online ways. So uh, like this, I and, and the way they actually, uh, you know, responded to the issue in as soon as possible time, which, which shows they are pretty sincere about, uh, um, you know, if, if there is any problem comes up. So uh, we, we are hopeful uh, that Bangladesh will have a, a strong foothold in Chinese market if we both um, work together in such a quick and you know friendly manner. On this regard, we would like to uh, Bangladesh China Chamber of Commerce and Industries would like to propose some of our, <coughs> our thinking which I will start with, we should form a joint and inclusive tax force, um, um, including everyone, every government agencies and uh, the business bodies, scholars, medias, and everyone. And, and, if they, and we should move uh, together and sit for a uh, you know, monthly meeting to follow up uh, the previous decision that we had. We need extensive research work on Chinese market uh, and and we um, we send our products and services accordingly, designed for the Chinese market especially. We are welcoming, and we should be more aggressive uh, to welcome more investors to come to Bangladesh, and their investment should be backed by the export. As you know, we have many types of facilities we are enjoying already. So we need to make Chinese investors um, uh, known about the fact and welcome them to come to Bangladesh and re-export it to China. Uh, we should uh, recording in progress. And, we should include and back uh, the like uh, um, all the trade bodies and the association to communicate more with the Chinese counterparts and uh, both the embassies and, and, and the foreign, um, you know, uh, foreign agencies has a big role to play here to promote those uh, bilateral chambers. 
we uh, we actually we are feeling the need of a permanent exhibition center in china especially in the uh, you know business hubs so many of the countries are enjoying these facilities in china so bangladesh uh, should also focus on that matter so that we can chinese buyers in a in a more convenient way we should arrange joint road shows and investment summit uh, in china um, regularly to attract more investment and also showcase our bangladeshi product we uh, uh, we will urge both the government uh, to sign a preferential bilateral treaty regarding our main export items and and um, we will be very happy if you uh, actually include us in that negotiation so can, we can give you uh, the feedback from the business point of view we will be very happy if we uh, can form a body for a quick response to the dispute that has been arising uh, for import and export and and if the you know business people from both the side can get a quick remedy for the for their disputes so they will be much more interested to take bangladeshi products from uh, our end we should arrange more uh, b2b uh, b2b meetings and where we should find uh, actually more uh, real buyers we have seen many b2b meetings uh, actually they uh, we still could not get a very vibrant response from those b2b meetings so we should get uh, try to uh, gather those buyers in uh, in a proper manner for the bangladeshi products which we are selling uh, so we sincerely believe today's virtual deliberation will guide the business communities to get some ideas about the products and the services that might do well in chinese market and the way to avail the maximum benefit of the duty free access in china in this regard i would like to assure the business community that we are here bangladesh china chamber of commerce are here uh, to help you out as a bridge uh, between bangladesh and china and and not only uh, uh, to expand your business if there is any topic that we can do uh, uh, we can do uh, bring some help and come forward we are always there we are setting up a uh, different legal panels and and uh, a panel for the expertise to guide us and and if there is any input that we can get from your side uh, i can ensure you it will be taken care of so i also believe that such deliberation will go a long way in identifying the scopes and opportunities to carry on the entrepreneurial in, uh, initiative through the pandemic i hope this deliberation would be beneficial to all the concerns so thanks epb and uh, bangladesh embassy and all those participants who will be sharing their uh, dignified views uh, on this lectures so uh, thanks once again have a good day Thank you, Mr. Amrita, for sharing uh, with us the current situation of the business relationship of Bangladesh with China, and I'm sure uh, and bringing up the Chamber's position in this regard, uh, the business community of Bangladesh and China will be must be feeling assured to know how the Chamber is working relentlessly to improve the relationship. So uh, at this point, uh, I would like to request uh, Dr. Mahfuz Kobi, Research Director, BIS, to please present his keynote reflecting the prospects of Bangladeshi products in Chinese market and how the Bangladeshi importers can benefit from the preferential treatment. Uh, Mahfuz Bhai, you will have 10 minutes. Excellency, uh, Mr. Mahmoud Zaman, Ambassador Bangladesh to China, uh, uh, to this case, and uh, panelists and ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'll be very, very brief. I have a PowerPoint presentation so uh, on the prospect of Bangladesh products in Chinese market, and I'll be, I'll start. 
Please you start. Okay. Please. Okay. I'll start by uh, providing a brief background regarding the uh, the facilities that, in fact, uh, what is the background of Bangladesh-China, in fact, uh, relations, and basically it's dominated by trade and investment over the last uh, two decades. And as already mentioned uh, by the moderator, uh, China is the biggest trade partner of, of Bangladesh. And uh, if you see the uh, trend over the last five years, so it's uh, about uh, 10 billion plus US dollars of bilateral trade. And what are the major elevators of bilateral trade? So the first is the agreement uh, of economic and technical cooperation and agreement of uh, trade payments. So that, that was back in 1977 and then joined Committee on Economy, Trade and Science and Technology and then agreement on of trade, avoidance of double taxation and agreement on economic and uh, technical cooperation and the concessions as, as the LDC. So it was passed in uh, 2010 on APTA. So and then uh, WTO. So under the WTO, so we now got the uh, in fact, differential access of, of 8,000 plus products and then joint statement during the visit of the Chinese president Xi Jinping uh, to Bangladesh in uh, 2016. So if you see the, the changes of Bangladesh export in important destination, then you can see China is one of the destinations in which we got, got the significant uh, growth uh, despite COVID pandemic in, in 2000. Uh, 2021 and then if you see the bangladesh export to china so uh, and then you, you can see uh, that uh, there is a fluctuation it's not the secular kind of uh, growth over the last uh, five years so and and because of the pandemic so uh, it, the uh, export volume has declined from 831 million to 600 million only. And then in the last fiscal year, uh, so it was 680. And if you see the, the kind of composition of the products, then woven garments, uh, the other vegetable fibers, basically jute item, and then uh, leather goods and iron and steel. So these are the basically the main products and, and also the knit wire. So, and the dynamics is changing rapidly. So if you see the composition over the last, in fact, two years, then you can see that the good product is, is significant. And it, traditionally, we had the competitive advantage of the, in fact, RNG products, but now it's declining. And the textile and clothing, if you see the trend, so it's, it's declining uh, since uh, 2018 and 19. In the last fiscal year, it was only 2,271 uh, million dollars, even though in the uh, fiscal year 2018 and 19, it was 506 uh, million plus, and our R&D exporters were, in fact, optimistic regarding the market next to uh, India. So, and and so it was, in fact, uh, evident from the in fact, uh, kind of growth uh, since 2016 and 17, but then in 2019-20 and then 2020-21, so it was a declining trend. And if you see the progress over the last four months of, of the current fiscal year, from July to October, so and if you uh, see the the kind of trend, and then if you calculate the in fact potential in fact export of RNG products, then you, you can see that it's, it's about 29%. In fact, if you add both meat uh, wire and oven. And then it's very briefly about the export performance of 2021-22 and uh, merchandise export was only uh, 228 million. So in, in in, in the last four uh, months of the current fiscal year. So, and it was uh, about 1.45% of total exports. And in fact, in, in the uh, very simple forecast, it would be only 687 million 
at the by the end of this fiscal year with the current strength we will so and it would not be that much significant compared to the last fiscal year's performance the what are the major products and uh, hs uh, code 61 and 62 it's rmd products is about 29 percent and then uh, it is code 53 it's uh, the dude product 26.5 percent and then raw hide and skin it's leather iron and steel and prepared feather so these are the in fact top products that are that we are exporting in in the current fiscal year and it's not that much significant change compared to the last fiscal year so these are the basically the products that we are exporting and and another important product if you consider the it is in fact eight digit so it's it's human hair so the two products human hair and iron and steel these are coming as an important product uh, instead of the uh, rngs which are in, in which we have competitive advantage so this is an in indication of uh, product diversification so the china has in fact the interest in the diversified product it's not the uh, kind of product that we have a competitive advantage in our export basket so you need to in fact consider that and now the kind of projection that i i made with up to the fiscal year 20 25 26 if the current growth rate prevails then uh, it would be uh, 1.28 billion only uh, before our ldc graduation so but if we consider an optimistic growth then if we can utilize the, the uh, kind of benefit that china has granted so under if after and wto so we can achieve in fact about 2.5 billion in fact export so that is a, a potential that we can in fact uh, utilize and then about the duty free market access as we already know the we need to in fact memorize the number it's 8256 so that is the number of products that china has granted in in uh, the duty free access in their market in uh, and which is effective from first july 2020 and there is a kind of negative perception that even though the, it was granted but what is the performance so it should be reflected in the trade performance so and the thing is that the whole in fact the supply chain the, the global supply chain was disrupted because of the covid 19 pandemic so there are some in fact good signs in in other markets but still if you see the in fact kind of uh, value chain integration between bangladesh and china so it's basically with the uh, rmd sector so it was in fact disrupted and uh, since the new products new kind of products even though the jute products are traditional but uh, there are new products uh, in in the list so these are emerging and and it has the demand in the chinese market so and because of the supply chain so disruption the uh, there is no immediate kind of reflection in the uh, export performance but it's it's emerging so that is the uh, kind of thing that we need to consider so and we also have a lack of diversified uh, product markets uh, so and it it's the reality so we need to uh, diversify and we need to bring up uh, the new kind of products in the in the list of our export basket and it's not only the uh, the change in the in the uh, product line but also we have to have the standard as per the requirement by the chinese consumers and also by the buyers and there is another big uh, problem that was that is apprehended by the export community which is a stringent condition so we have to in fact comply with the 40 percent minimum domestic value addition so and i don't know i mean the, whether the our exporters are ready in that way so and we have to uh, wait for the revival so there is a huge in fact container uh, dot and and also the uh, the in fact trade charts so there is a significant increase up to 300 percent increase so and and we have to compete with our uh, in fact competitors in the in the global market so and because of that we, we uh, there is a need for in fact kind of policy a guideline uh, by the government and if possible there should be uh, some kind of incentive in fact policy and, and also fiscal in incentive by, by the government so that is required and 
we we already know our our exporters already know the the list because it's provided in in the website of the ministry of commerce so and it's now in the owners of the abcci and, and other bodies to explain to the to the producer and exporters the uh, on on the kind of products because in the, in the list it's a huge 1200 uh, plus pages so uh, we have to decode uh, the kind of in fact uh, products and and the relevant in fact uh, the uh, facilities that that chinese market is providing and there is another thing that we need to consider which is the relationship so it takes some time to establish the relationship between the buyers and and the exporters so and and we have to have an aggressive uh, kind of economic diplomacy and and the, the Honorable Ambassador is here, and and the embassy is working on this. But there is a kind of tripartite relationship uh, among the embassy, the buyers, and the exporters here in Bangladesh. So that that is required, and and also the, there is need for uh, policy directions from the APCC and uh, Bangladesh China Chamber. And we have to strengthen the value chain so that there is a guideline in the eight five year plan of, of the government of Bangladesh and also vision. 2041 documents. So there is a clear guideline regarding the two matters. One is the value chain integration uh, between Bangladesh and China, and, and not only China, but uh, but also beyond, like the integration with the East Eastern Asian uh, market. And also, China is a cheap uh, source of raw, raw material, and and it and it's being utilized to maintain trade surplus in the European and North American parties. But we have to have a, uh, if, if we have a bilateral comprehensive economic partnership agreement between Bangladesh and China, so that, that will help a lot. And it, it will, in fact, strengthen the value chain between the two countries. And, and also it would help get, in fact, cheap raw materials and intermediate goods and, and also the capital goods from, the, uh, from China. And we have to have a, 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 in fact, friendly, in fact, more friendly business environment here in Bangladesh, uh, so that the cost of uh, time clearance is reduced in the seaports, and also the uh, extending the Chinese production base in the non-cotton RMD. So now we are, in fact, specializing on on cotton, so which is costly, not in uh, not only in terms of in fact uh, production in the cost. But also, there is a huge environmental cost. So, and if we uh, in fact, focus on the non-cotton RMG, then it will have a more value addition. In fact, domestic value addition, and there is a huge demand in the international market, including China. So, our RMG export will significantly increase if, if, if we can focus on the non-cotton RMG. And uh, in fact, China's costly and declining industry. So, we are hearing a lot. Uh, over the last five, six years regarding the sun sunset industries in China, but we have to prepare ourselves uh, regarding the, their relocation uh, to Bangladesh so that it can help achieve the strengthened uh, bilateral value chain between Bangladesh and China. And we have to attract investment from China uh, to, in fact, realize the benefits under the duty free access uh, as we have the low labor cost. So, uh, and we have to standardize product. We uh, now we have the SARSO, the South Asian Regional Standard Organization. So it's it's helping a lot uh, to, in fact, improve our uh, standard. It, it's, it maintains the international standard. But as we can see, the kind of products that we have in our export ba basket, so it doesn't cover all the all the products. So it's, the SARSO specifically focuses on only on the, uh, in fact agricultural products, not the manufacturing goods, like, I mean, the exp export items. So we have to extend, in fact, the, the standard uh, on the RNG and, and other export items. And we have to produce a wide range and diversified uh, products. And if we see the kind of products we are exporting, so uh, if we uh, consider that uh, top 10 items under the HS, in fact, eight digits, then we can see that it's about 60 percent of the total export so and and it's prevailing since 2012-13 so it's pretty long time 
now we, there is a time so it has the time has come because china uh, if we see the, the kind of products that are, we are exporting to china so it's non traditional products that are uh, coming so we have to in fact bring in other products in the, in the uh, list and we definitely the the consumers mind is changing so uh, we have to understand the nature of the demand of the of the chinese market especially the consumers and, and the, the buyers so and uh, keeping this in mind we have to in fact in the the design that the kind of uh, quality of products that they, they want so these are uh, some of the way forwards and uh, now i would like to end here thank you very much uh, thank you, Dr. Mahfuz, for your informative presentation and detailed analysis on how the Bangladeshi uh, businessmen and business community can be uh, can enhance the business in China. And I'm uh, I'm hopeful that the business community ha have taken notes from your presentation and they will uh, surely think about these things. Uh, at this point, I would like to request Dr. Nazneen Ahmed, the country economist of UNDP in Bangladesh, to please share her thoughts with us. Uh, Dr. Nazneen Ahmed has extensively worked on the trade issues of Bangladesh, and she's a very eloquent speaker, so we are very excited to hear from you, Nazneen Appa. Appa, you will have seven minutes. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you, uh, Siban Shahana. My uh, actually call it from BIDS. I joined UNDP uh, recently, and whatever I will say today, um, it will be my personal views. Uh, UNDP has no connection with uh, my opinions. Uh, good morning, everyone. Again. Uh, 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 Thanks to uh, the organizer, Bangladesh-China uh, Association, and also EPB for organizing this important um, webinar, uh, Bangladesh-China Chamber of Commerce and Association. Sorry, I uh, pronounced it wrongly. And also, I'm very happy to see um, Excellency Ambassador Mahbubu Zaman uh, with us uh, in this important conversation. Uh, thanks, Mahfuz Kobir, for your uh, informative presentation. And I will not uh, repeat what Mahfuz Kovir said, I have no, um, uh, you know, um, uh, I, I agree to what he has mentioned there as few way forward, but I will add few things with it. So when we are thinking of uh, utilizing this preferential treatment uh, in Chinese market and utilizing our opportunities in the Chinese market, I think we also have to uh, give a broader look into the whole uh, trade relation, a uh, trade and investment relationship with China, because that is important. Uh, we know that, and also Mafus Kobir is. Um, I know he is involved with lots of this discussion and research on the connectivity within this region, which is very important when we are uh, this uh, road belt and road initiative. These 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 contexts are important when we do any kind of trade talks, when we uh, go to, because those are our trump cards. When we have trade negotiation, when even we are dealing with export negotiation, we know that lots of investment potentials are there. So uh, our, uh, I, I would like to, what I would like to say that our exporters and potential exporters and existing exporters, when they are having trade negotiation, export um, exploration poss potentials, they should take it from the view of the whole, uh, from a holistic point of view. For example, they should clearly know that what are the investment possibilities from China to Bangladesh? What is going on? Is it only infrastructure? We know that China is um, a, a good investor in Bangladesh's infrastructure, especially in the power and energy sector. And in recent time, China is also investing in the green energy sector. So these are the kind of, when we have, we know when we are exploring their market, if we can, as a business point of view, show that how also China has potential in our market in terms of investment, that gives a full package. And in this context, I would like to say that we have to see how the, uh, the from the economic zone perspective, how the uh, Chinese economic zone, how what is the current status of that? Because these are the kind of things that will give us uh, uh, give us a 
potential, you know, favorable position when we do our uh, trade negotiation. At the same time, as um, Mahfuz was mentioning that uh, our the graduation, LDC graduation is an important context because in 2026, Bangladesh will go out of the LDC list and maybe we'll have another three years and currently uh, in the coming WTO ministerial, uh, Bangladesh um, with other uh, graduating uh, LDCs will be uh, is a uh, applying for um, the 12 years of waiver and uh, in the in the uh, in the WTO context but even we we have to bear in mind this whole thing because once we graduate out of LDC Bangladesh trade relationship gradually with different export market will be changed. So uh, from now on, whenever, whatever uh, export and import um, negotiation we are doing, we have to bear in mind that we have to have a longer term view where there will be lots of changes. At this moment, uh, Bangladesh government from the prior PMO office is in the uh, they have different subcommittees there that are working on a smooth uh, transition from the ldc i think it's very important for uh, bd china uh, chamber of commerce and industries also to be uh, part of that conversation because they have um, they have subcommittee on market access uh, under the ministry of commerce and uh, that subcommittee is working on possible impact of graduation uh, uh, on in different markets. I think it's very important that uh, also Chinese market is in that conversation. So um, I don't know whether uh, uh, whether uh, BD China Chamber of Commerce is associated to that process. I think it's important to be a part of that conversation. So uh, whatever is uh, because those subcommittees are working on the possibilities of um, uh, the necessary of different kinds of studies and other things and the development partners because I'm uh, from the uh, from, from all UN agencies UNDP is uh, uh, committed to support Bangladesh government uh, in the whole LDC graduation process and um, currently those conversation is going on so it, when the demand for different studies for on different markets will come uh, so uh, development partners are in commitment to uh, support to the extent it goes with their mandate. So I think it's very important at this moment, uh, Bangladesh, China, uh, Chamber of Commerce and other exporters uh, as part of, I, I think different exporters are also part of FBCCI, uh, Dhaka Chamber and other chambers who are actively participating in those subcommittees. So, and um, I can, I see uh, Director General EPB is here and I'm glad to see him that they are also part of uh, that process. So I think it's important important to look into the Chinese market under the LDC graduation uh, context. So I will not go, um, I, I will not exist, uh, take more time. All I want to say that the way forward mentioned by Dr. Mahfuz Kobir uh, should be taken care of. At the same time, we have to look at the broader picture uh, of uh, our investment potential of China, China's investment potential in Bangladesh. And you know, uh, when um, the Honorable Prime Minister uh, visited China, there were uh, lots of uh, MOUs that happened at that time. And I think uh, along with this, uh, uh, along with the new concessions or we, we have to consider the earlier commitments, the investment of the other commitments. So that gives a full picture. It's not, if we just go with one, uh, this uh, special, special treatment and another investment separately, I think we lose the leverage. So uh, I think we have to give a holistic view and we really have to be uh, part of uh, the Chinese market should be part of the discussion when we are preparing uh, ourselves for uh, graduation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nazneen Appa. It is always a pleasure to hear from you. And Appa has uh, brought up a very important topic of discussion that the business community and all the stakeholders will uh, will start thinking about uh, how the trade relationship will change after Bangladesh graduates from the from its LDC status. And um, 
Uh, at this point, I would like to call our second panelist, Dr. M. Abu Yusuf, Executive Director of RAPID, to please share his thoughts with us. Uh, Sarah, you will also have seven minutes. Uh, thank you very much, um, Honorable uh, Chief Guest, His Excellency Ambassador Mahmoud Jaman, um, Chair of the session, and I think it's a very timely initiative uh, the webinar being organized by uh, Bangladesh, uh, China Chamber of Commerce and Industry and Expo Promotion Bureau. Uh, at the outset, um, I would like to uh, congratulate Dr. Mahfuz Kovir for his uh, very comprehensive presentation on this. Uh, let me also introduce myself. I am Executive Director of RAPID. In addition to that, I'm basically, I am Professor Dhaka University, uh, working in the Department of Development Studies. Okay, um, so uh, from the pr presentation made by Dr. Mahfuz Kovir and uh, the discussion by Dr. Nazdin that there is a huge prospect of Bangladeshi products to Chinese markets. Not only that, uh, uh, there are some discussions that how we can attract um, uh, Chinese um, FDI to um, Bangladesh as well, uh, so that we can have some um, win-win uh, situation on these issues. And um, in the Mahabhus COVID um, presentation, it was also highlighted that, you know, we are passing a, uh, I think, transition period uh, because Bangladesh is being um, graduated um, from LDC to developing country by 2026. So the next five years time is very crucial for us. So it is very important uh, for us uh, how, to, how to prepare ourselves. And uh, definitely uh, Chinese market is a very big market uh, for us as uh, we know that um, China's uh, extended, um, you know, duty-free market access is a profound opportunity for Bangladesh. So we have to uh, utilize this opportunity. And uh, it is, uh, you know, um, true that China is the second largest economy uh, with about 14 trillion domestic market. So which will reach, you know, uh, from the literature, what we have found that 30 trillion dollar uh, soon. So from different studies, it is clear that there is a huge market prospects for Bangladesh um, as only about 30% export potential in China is currently utilized. So if we can increase our market share by uh, 1% an additional uh, 25 uh, billion dollar worth of export is uh, possible. But it is depend, um, it depends on how we uh, prepare ourselves. And under the extended duty-free market access, Bangladesh would have to add 40% value to get duty-free benefit in China. So while it um, may appear as a challenge, I think this should be an, uh, also taken as a chance to increase our product capacity. So I would like to uh, highlight some few points what uh, Dr. Mahfuz Kovid also mentioned uh, in terms of oil forward, uh, that is strengthening of uh, value chain and also of course, China uh, is chief source of raw materials and also attracting uh, Chinese investment to Bangladesh. So in line with the title of the uh, this webinar, the prospect of Bangladeshi products, so I would like to highlight some uh, few points. Uh, first, um, uh, we need to have a clear assessment on what are the products that Chinese consumers would like to buy. Then we can carefully go for production, whatever the good it may be, for increased exports, we have to seek more FDI and technological know-how, so this can push the exports manifold. And you know, for the long time, we are talking about export diversification, but unfortunately, uh, after the 50 years of Bangladesh, you know, that uh, export diversification uh, has not, you know, uh, went that much. So we need to focus on that uh, also. And within the RNG, say so for um, example, diversifying the RNG export basket and breaking into more high value added products demanded by Chinese consumers can also play an important role to expand exports. For that, what investment do we need? How can we uh, upskill the workforce? How can we negotiate technological know-how with potential partners? These are all important. And uh, not only ready-made garments, if we non focus on the non-RMG products, particularly Bangladesh's uh, pharmaceutical industry depends on raw materials imports from China. But we have the capacity to supply cheaper medicines to China. 
this is one area where we should exploit and improve our capacity according to one estimates pharmaceutical companies in bangladesh can still make profit by exporting drugs of similar standard at 20 to 25% cheaper rates than those offered by chinese manufacturers export of leather products you know leather and leather goods we have uh, some comparative advantage unfortunately we are not doing um, much on these issues due to compliance issues however um, due to uh, changing circumstances and keeping the ldc graduation in mind we need to focus on these issues so exports of leather products is another sector that we can focus in leather and leather goods bangladesh is a small supplier where with a market share of less than 1% to china uh, the market size of chinese leather and leather goods import is more than 10 billion so the largest supplier of these items is italy capturing one fifth of the market followed by vietnam usa and france so i think this is the one area that we can uh, focus on uh, as a potential market to chinese uh, potential product to chinese market one way to address the skills challenge of the workforce could be facilitating a industry specific training program let's look back on how desh governments became the pioneer of rng industry so can we replicate that model by focus training and subsequently attracting the required fdi so we need to consider this uh, seriously we have to closely work with the entrepreneurs because they already know the challenges and the areas to work on it <clears throat> i know um, his excellency ambassador and also our, as mentioned by dr nazdin our pm office uh, our export promotion bureau they are also working on it so one of the areas we need to focus on say for language barrier uh, is open pointed as an issue and dhaka university you know there is a uh, department also on chinese uh, language um, also it has been reported that bangladesh's presence in uh, chinese trade fair has been less than impressive so we have to support the entrepreneur enterprises in export promotion by addressing these challenges along with um, increasing the productive capacity um, last but not the least uh, as also highlighted by dr nazdin ahmed that it is important to fast track the chinese economic and industrial zone near the port city chotogram uh, so it is dedicated to chinese enterprises uh, which should incentivize companies to set up their we have to act fast to seize uh, the opportunity. So I think uh, this uh, webinar uh, is a timely initiative and we need to um, create the opportunity uh, for our Bangladeshi entrepreneurs to the Chinese market. We need to diversify the products and uh, uh, we are, uh, Export Promotion Bureau and our uh, embassy. Uh, so they are working on this. I think the output of this uh, webinar will be very much useful and it will be helpful um, also to contribute uh, in the smooth transition of our graduation process as well. So having said this, thank you very much for inviting me um, to uh, give this, um, give me opportunity to talk here on such an important issue, which is engine of our growth and lifeline of our economy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Yusuf, sir, for your to-the-point discussion. Sir has rightly pointed out the importance of product diversification if we want to enhance our export to Chinese market. And um, now we have um, our third panelist, uh, Mr. M.S. Siddiqui, co-convener, Bangladesh Columnist Forum. Uh, sir, you will also have uh, six minutes to share your thoughts with us. Uh, thank you very much. Uh uh, Honorable uh, Ambassador to China, Mr. Mahabur Jaman, the Director General of BB, Mr. Mahabur Raman, uh, Mr. Mahmoud Mirdha, Joint Secretary General of Bangladesh China Chamber of Commerce, Dr. Mahfuz Kubir, Dr. Nazim Ahmed, and Prof. Abu uh, and, uh, and other audience. Uh, actually, everything has been detailed, presented by Dr. Mahfuz Kubir after. Uh, Detailed discussion with Professor Abu Mahmoud, uh, Abu Yusuf, and Mr. Uh, Dr. Nazdin Ahmed. I have nothing to say. So let me add some small things. Uh, if you look into the uh, export import list of China, you will see all are uh, mostly high tech products and minerals and raw materials. And if you look into the at the middle of the list, you will find some pharmaceutical products and agricultural products. And that has uh, that. 
already Professor Yusuf has uh, mentioned the pharmaceutical and also agriculture product. We are exporting some agricultural product to China uh, and also, but not much. Uh, we are active in pharmaceutical sector, although we are one of the uh, biggest uh, pharmaceutical exporter in LDC countries. So we can focus the China market. At the same time, we are we are exporting textile, some, uh, some garments, footwear, small quantity of footwear. So we can let us see. All these products are primary products, uh, low technology products. So we are in the primary stage of uh, entering into the uh, Chinese market. And if we look into the experience of uh, similar, slightly advanced country from Bangladesh, Vietnam. What they did actually, they have started with this product, the uh, agricultural products and uh, garments, ready-made garments and others. They have started exporting to. Now they are switching to high tech or medium tech uh, products uh, and enter. They are gradually entering into the Chinese market. So how they did it? Um, uh, we are we are exporting some small quantity of uh, shoes and garments. Definitely, and if you look into the uh, real picture, in 2010, Nike has shut down their factory in China and shipped it to relocate it to Vietnam. And along with few hundred shoe industries, local and multinational, they have shifted from China to Vietnam and started exporting to China. In 2019, Samsung has totally shut down their mobile phone plant in China. Now they have shifted, the entire production site has shifted to Vietnam. So uh, now you see, and if, if you go to the China, you will see uh, thousands of uh, showroom, of uh, Samsung showroom of uh, mobile cell, cell time telephone. So th those are not in, produced in Korea or not in China. Those are from different countries. So now you see the style of uh, the shifting or moving towards other products, this, the way Vietnam or other country is doing. That is what we shall have to follow. We are very fortunate that we have started exporting ready-made garments to other country. We, it is a low technology uh, product and it is, it is, it is, it has given exposure to the overseas market, uh, to Bangladesh product. But now it is a, it is a barrier for us. Our mindset is similar to uh, government's experience. We have, we thought that we can, we have, uh, we have idea impression that we can set up some factory, factory, somebody will come, place some order, and uh, we shall export to China or any other country, but it will not happen. That's why you will see a, a deadlock in export. We are, uh, we are somehow surviving in the government's uh, export with subsidy and discount. But, uh, we are not switching over to other products, but these are our local problems. Mr. Uh, Mrida was requesting the China to help Bangladesh uh, to promote the export from Bangladesh to China. Actually, if we don't help ourselves, China cannot help our, uh, help us. So, what we can do? Say, I can give you another example of one industry. Just I met a Chinese investor in Bangladesh. He is making string uh, for uh, tag in garments. So it's a very simple item. You, uh, you, maybe you are surprised that a string and a sticker we are producing, Chinese company is producing in Bangladesh. Why? It's, it is also a so-called low technology product. But this company came here in Bangladesh from China. This Chinese company is an associate company of one Switzerland multinational company. And Bangladesh Associate is part of Chinese uh, partners, counterpart. So they are producing millions of stings and exporting, uh, selling to local garments industry and exporting to other countries, including China. So it is, it is a part of supply chain. That supply chain means uh, originated from Europe through China, they came to Bangladesh. And for them, marketing is not a problem. They, they don't think of marketing because the mother company in Switzerland and 
second uh, associate company in china is promoting their product and they have tie up with the global brands so when european buyers are purchasing garments they recommend this string company to sell so or request the bangladesh garments industry to buy from this company so these are the second stage of uh, going enter into the market through partnership and entering into supply chain so that's why we shall have to think uh, how we shall enter into the global market or maybe you can say chinese market and the chinese market the the culture is important for uh, for us because we are expo- we are experienced on european market but we are sorry to be- interrupt uh, maybe you have to finish in one minute please sir okay 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 so uh, that's why i say uh, there should be a rethinking of policy of bangladesh so that we can enter into the joint venture we can uh, request the chinese manufacturers to come here and buy back with uh, to china but it, that's why we need to support them with technology technical people skilled workers and others and lastly the vida uh, says but, and also indirectly mentioned by dr kobi mohammed kabir without free trade agreement with china we cannot avail this discounted tax benefit of afta thank you very much thank you all thank you very much sir for your excellent uh, analysis and um uh you have rightly mentioned that how the bangladeshi commodities must be must um go up in the technology scale if it, if they want to increase their export share in the chinese market and uh without wasting any time uh his excellency uh mr mahbubu zaman sir is with us from the very beginning of the w- uh, webinar so please allow me to welcome his excellency mahbubu zaman sir honorable ambassador of bangladesh to china to please enlighten us uh thank you am i being audible shona jacche amar kotha hello yes sir we can hear you clearly uh thank you uh thank you first of all i would like to uh, uh you know congratulate uh, uh the uh, ministry of uh, commerce and also epb and also the bangladesh chamber of commerce and industries uh, uh, for organizing this uh, Uh, webinar on prospect of bangladeshi products in chinese market how to realize the potential of preferential treatment also uh, thanks to the keynote speaker dr mohammad mahfuz kabir and also to the distinguished uh, panelists uh, uh, for enlightening us i've uh, 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 heard it attentively and also have taken uh, notes um, at the very outset i would like to say that uh, i would have preferred that the uh, topic would be uh, like not only focusing on the preferential uh, treatment aspect uh, we should not focus on the only just a narrow range of products and enhance um, uh, the ultimate in the long run we would like to enhance our competitiveness uh, diversify our export basket and uh, and just this will be the uh, transition phase like uh, the preferences are given uh, uh, i would like to note out that this is just for the ldc and for uh, ldc country so in the long run we have to build our own capacity we have to build our uh, uh, value add addition and also uh, take advantage of diversifying the export uh, uh, export market uh, export basket uh, we see that uh, as uh, 8400 uh, uh 65 items uh, lastly in january uh, these uh, additions have been given as a part of the 97% uh, duty free uh, uh, you know access uh, into the chinese market so i i personally believe that it is uh, indeed an opportunity uh, for bangladesh to take advantage uh, it is just not only a question of uh, you know value addition uh, because the panelists have also rightly pointed out that if we uh, have more foreign direct investment in bangladesh then it will also bring along you know technology uh, r and d research and development and also we can integrate with the supply and value chain of not only the chinese market uh, but also of uh, the uh, uh, you know rest of the world the whole of the world because i must uh, tell that uh, china has uh, you know evolved a policy of dual circulation 
where also uh, they are exporting to rest of the countries and uh, but also they are uh, uh, importing on a larger scale uh, from outside the world it is uh, called a dual concept or dual circulation concept recently i have been uh, attending the uh, your shanghai import fair it is the largest uh, uh, import uh, uh, fair uh, in the world and uh, i was amazed to see the quantum or the uh, demand uh, for imports from the rest of the world in fact uh, you know considering the chinese market of 1.5 billion uh, huge domestic market there is a huge potential uh, uh, for, uh, uh, for 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 diversifying and um, and expanding our uh, you know uh, export export base uh, so uh, um, I would like to uh, uh, also concur with, uh, I think, uh, Ms. Uh, Dr. Nazneen Ahmed also said that we have to look into the you know, broader uh, picture. And uh, I would also like to incorporate uh, the vision or the idea of the political leadership. Uh, you know, when we were given uh, this uh, everything but arms uh, initiative by the uh, you know, European Union, uh, where uh, where uh, everything but except arms were, uh, uh, were 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 accepted and given duty free access uh, for uh, Bangladesh and it has helped us a lot. Uh, uh, so uh, I think that is a, a huge uh, you know opportunity uh, to take advantage of this uh, du uh, duty free ninety seven uh, uh, percent uh, uh, you know um, uh, access and um, of course. Uh, uh, we have. I would just like to comment on uh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Al Mamun Midhas, uh, who, who said uh, that we need to have a permanent exhibition hall. I like to agree with him. And 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 in fact, in Shanghai, uh, we have got uh, a, a permanent exhibition space uh, where we had already written to the Export Promotion Bureau, uh, uh, you know, uh, to uh, to uh, uh, display. And, and promote our uh, Bangladeshi products in that permanent space. Uh, so we would also like the help and support of the private, uh, you know, sector uh, to uh, to uh, supply uh, the potential export uh, export uh, you know um, uh, items uh, uh, that would be uh, put on uh, on display. And of course, uh, one of my ideas since I've been here for almost two two and a half years. Uh, uh, definitely more research work on the Chinese market has to be done. We can have a, a bridging system where uh, we find that many Chinese scholars, research institutes have also, uh, you know, uh, um, you know, written a lot about the Chinese market, not uh, particularly on the Bangladesh side. So we can integrate it and put it in a website and in our website also. And maybe uh, why not if uh, the Export Promotion Bureau uh, can think of having a, a, a link uh, uh, or, 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 or access uh, to the Chinese market where we can put, uh, you know, research works uh, 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 and, and how to uh, better access the Chinese market. Uh, because uh, during my two and a half years here, uh, the Chinese uh, exporters were also, you know, uh, requesting us uh, to have, uh, uh, you know, uh, greater access and greater facilitation. And this we would call the uh, trade promotion and trade marketing uh, you know, um, efforts. And uh, of course, uh, uh, we also need to focus on the, you know, quality of the products. Uh, uh, it has to be a, a very, uh, uh, you know, good quality uh, products uh, where uh, it is widely accepted. Uh, and of course, uh, if we see uh, uh, in the growth model of uh, Harold uh, Groma, uh, Dumar, like growth is dependent on savings and also uh, uh, the capital output ratio. So uh, technologically wise, I think uh, we have to improve uh, uh, the product, uh, the capital to output you know, uh, uh, ratio. How we can do it? We can do it through technology. We can uh, do through scientific research. So the per, uh, per unit output uh, uh, is uh, enhanced. And, and in this way, we also, you know, uh, stand uh, uh, to benefit uh, in this process. So technological um, improvement, innovation and advancement is, uh, uh, you know, uh, very important for us. And uh, of course, just one additional point is that uh, I personally believe that, uh, you know, the uh, duty-free access that has been given also involves the textiles and the RMG, which is also plays a prominent role in the range of our exports. Um, especially the uh, the knitwear and the woven have a very potential uh, uh, to benefit 
from this uh, preferential uh, access uh, system because uh, of its high potential of uh, you know value addition and of course one additional point to note is that uh, 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 if we have foreign direct investment especially from chinese investors especially in the economic uh, zones uh, and the export processing zone exclusive zones it will also bring technology it will also bring um, greater access to the supply and the you know value change and in this way we can uh, at least fill up the gaps uh, 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 due to this uh, uh, narrow range of uh you know exports uh, and um, i have toured extensively uh during my stint here i found that uh, the chinese are willing to invest uh, uh, in large amount uh, in the rest of the world provided they are given the opportunities uh, like tax breaks uh, you know 100% export uh, you know uh, repatriation of profits assurance against uh, uh, you know uh, nationalizations uh, so um, we have a big uh, potential if they are given the opportunity to invest we can have something like the shenzhen uh, economic zone and also the greater bay uh, development area where we have like hong kong macau zhuhai where 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 foreign investment with high technology and the great industrialized uh, com uh, companies like uh, you know we have uh, uh, most of the uh, the chinese enterprises are uh, you know registered under the fortune 500 uh, uh, enterprises so that they are very big in terms of global investment and global standing and ranking Uh, so I think I've extinguished my time. Uh, so I could go on, uh, but uh, you know, uh, just I would like to uh, end uh, uh, with definitely a positive note and assure you that uh, our whole team, uh, the commercial counselor, economic counselor, and and the whole team, Bangladesh Investment stands ready to support and cooperate with the potential uh, investors. Thank you once again uh, for giving me this opportunity. Thanks. Thank you very much, sir, for sharing your personal uh, practical experiences with us. And I'm sure the exporters and importers of both the countries uh, will be very much assured to know how you will uh, provide them support if they want to invest and expand their product mm -hmm. horizon in the Chinese market. So at mm -hmm. this point, uh, we will have some time for open discussion. Uh, from my end, I I couldn't see the raised hand, but uh, so I would like to ask the technical teams to please. Um, Uh, provide a platform to if someone has uh, raised their hands and ask uh, specific questions to our panelist and uh, uh, keynote speaker. Sure, thank you. Uh, I can see so, uh, I can see a raised hand uh, from Sultan Iqbal. I think. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can hear you. Uh, I'd like to thank the organizers. I'd just say a few points because uh, my interaction with China starts since 1979. I studied in their language university and the defense university also. The His Excellency the Ambassador knows me. I like the word of mr ms siddiqui prc will not help us if we don't help ourselves having said that one i just want to uh, give some certain inputs if you do not know the chinese language you really do not know them just for our knowledge when i studied the chinese language university back in early 80s the diplomats coming to china all knew the chinese language so as the ambassador has said that a lot of writers have been given by the chinese people experience in this particular aspect which we need to share we have got four to five years for graduating now the chinese have give, given us certain concessions we are not clear what are those concessions is and how to con how to get those concessions back at home more interactions with the fbcci bcci and other group stakeholders are needed to come to a certain solution certain understanding certain level how to really cover up these four periods and 
once we graduate how to offset our balance <coughs> what this i feel there should be a pro core group to find out the requirements increasing the export to prc and this definitely would involve government policies just for information when china joined wto it had taken 15 years to understand the intricacies involved and they had joined so with that i'd like to thank you all for enlightening my knowledge and i'd like i i think what i'm trying to say all of you have understood thank you looking for our such opportunities in futures also assalam alaikum uh thank you mr sultan iqbal uh if someone else is there uh, you can provide them the floor uh i'm asking to the technical panel is there anyone who uh, who, who wants to ask any question to the panelist or the keynote speaker sure uh, i'm not seeing any uh, hand raise uh, in the uh, attendee uh, so okay. i think we can uh, uh, end the open discussion session um, here and if someone has any question they can uh, write it to us any time to bangladesh chamber of, of commerce and industries and to the panelist or the keynote speaker directly and uh, they will provide uh, the answer at their convenient time So, with the end of the question answer session, uh, we have almost come to the end of our webinar today. Uh, for the last one hour and fifteen minutes, we were uh, we have been listening to wonderful discussion. It was very informative, very thought provoking, and very timely topic of discussion. I thank once again to EPB and PCCI. And uh, at this point, I would like to call the Director General of EPB, Mahbubur Rahman, to please deliver his closing speech. <clears throat> thank you, Miss Sipan Shahana. Uh, yeah, if I pronounce it rightly. Uh, thank you very much for giving me the floor. At first, I want to uh, express, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, our vice chairman was supposed to join this session, uh, but he uh, informed me to beg your apology, uh, beg his apology to you that he is unable to join this session. So. Uh, uh, Thank you for uh, giving me floor. Uh, I'm uh, Director General of Export Promotion Bureau. At first, I uh, express my sincere gratitude to Ambassador His Excellency Babu Zaman, uh, panelist uh, Mr. M S Siddiqui, Mr. Abu Yusuf, uh, uh, Dr. M Abu Yusuf, Dr. Nazim Ahmed. and uh, mr al mamun mitha mumbai yes uh, it, uh, i was actually present in uh, in today's uh, session throughout the whole of this uh, one hour and some more uh, 15 minutes dr mahbub kobi he has uh, given a very extensive presentation regarding the present status of bangladesh china trade and the mr uh, mamun al mamun mitha has also uh, set a tone regarding the present uh, trading pattern uh, of bangladesh china so now uh, yeah you have rightly pointed that we are exporting a very little amount of uh, a little number of uh, products to china that's true uh, and uh, our uh, although the, our bilateral trade is uh, more than or about uh, 12 uh, billion dollar we import more than uh, 11 billion so our export to china is only uh, roughly 670 80 uh, yes in 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 1516 2015 16 it was about uh, uh, it was near to 1 billion but unfortunately uh we couldn't uh, we couldn't keep that uh, uh, stream of our uh, products flow towards china uh, one big reason behind this uh, uh, behind this uh, downturn is 
definitely the COVID-19 situation. The, yes, definitely, and everybody has pointed, uh, pointed that. But after that, after the resumption of trade all over the world, I think I think we couldn't capable we couldn't we couldn't show our metal what we can display to the world uh, scenario. We couldn't present our product or offer our exportables to uh, China. Um, uh, am, 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 among the uh, uh, among the uh, products that we export, that is also highly concentrated to some three to four items, especially uh, uh, jute and some jute goods, raw jute and some jute goods, uh, raw hide and skin, not not leather products. Yeah. So this is the misery of uh, our our export to China. Then again, Mr. Uh, Siddiqui has pointed that. Um, that we we should have a good potential of exporting pharmaceuticals to uh, Chinese market. So in uh, in uh, in that side also we are lagging behind. So altogether we we are uh, we have uh, a very other performance I should say in 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 presenting ourselves in China. Export Promotion Bureau is the only public sector. Uh, trade promotion organization we actually do whatever we can do on our part according to our previous experience and uh, and and our norms uh, we uh, attend in as many as 40 to 45 uh, trade fairs uh, or export fairs all over the world and uh, in uh, from that uh, 45 fairs uh, we go to china at least for six to seven times so here also we have more uh, more activity in china but our trade is not uh, augmenting uh, to the tune of our effort to enhance our trade with china if uh, you if we uh, if if we uh, uh, if we uh, uh, take the uh, comments of dr mafus kobir and Ms. nazmin to uh, integrating the value chain management with China, then it can, it is, I think it is a very, uh, it is the most important uh, uh, point that we should, we should consider. Because if we, if we uh, look at the Chinese trade pattern with African countries, then we'll see that they they have a investment trade relation. The country where China has a, an investment portfolio, they have good uh, trade and uh, uh, good trade with uh, with that country. So this is a uh, some sort of relation, although there is no uh, uh, geographic benefit for uh, for or, or no. Um, I mean uh, concentration. I mean the population over there is not that high. So uh, this 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 is a matter that should be considered. <clears throat> Again, um, from some uh, panelists. There are some opinions that we should, uh, yes, we definitely, uh, uh, today's chief guest Sar has mentioned that we should enhance our competitiveness. Definitely, we, 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 we have our competitiveness in some items, especially in uh, jute and uh, jute uh, and, and, and primary products primary produces, but uh, unfortunately we cannot, uh, we so far couldn't tap our market in China. So uh, we will be uh, actually engaging ourselves to think about what we can do to enhance our presence in Chinese markets. Uh, I should, uh, I want to inform you for your consumption that uh, after the pandemic, we have set a team to uh, hold the research on how, what are the measures that we can take with uh, China to augment our trade with them. Uh, because um, uh, uh, the traditional or conventional means are not working in the cases of China. That's a, uh, that's a type of reality we are facing. So uh, now we will uh, hire some researchers from the trade areas and the uh, Intelligentsia, and we will take information from the uh, from our mission uh, of Beijing, and we will look to see what are the best measures uh, uh, if it's unrelated to the investment trade uh, measure. If it is trade alone, then what are the measures we can take to enhance our uh, trade with uh, 
uh, with China. Even we are thinking of hiring uh, lobbyists. Uh, that how we can, what are the means, what are the ways that uh, that we can take to uh, increase our uh, trade with China? Because China is the second largest economy, and we have, uh, I mean, US, the largest economy, they import uh, about nine billion dollar from Bangladesh, but. Um, yeah, we are exporting only less than uh, less than a billion, uh, given that we have geographic proximity, distant density, everything we are having, but still we are lagging behind. So, uh, we uh, uh, as EPB, uh, we are considering uh, most of the recommendations that Dr. Nazneen, Mr. Dr. Mahfuz Kubir, and Mr. Ms. Siddiqui and uh, His Excellency has mentioned. Actually, those uh, those points uh, have enriched us. Now, I have taken note of uh, uh, most of what was uh, what I told in this uh, seminar. So we'll bring those information and uh, 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 information to the EPP. Uh, we'll put it to the appropriate forum after most of the recommendations, and we hope that we will uh, be able to uh, take the benefit of the unilateral trade, uh, I mean, trade creation effort of China uh, that has been given that 97% uh, of the trade tariff line products are uh, open for us to enter duty free. And uh, although the, the, the uh, domestic validation proportion is uh, a bit high, but still we have to uh, enhance our competitive advantage and uh, uh, increase the valuation component in our, in our production. So with this, uh, I think uh, I don't have much to say uh, because all the panelists and the keynote speaker and His Excellency uh, have give, uh, given very uh, rich uh, deliberations. After that, as, as concluding, uh, 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 speaker, I should not dare to say uh, uh, so much. So with this, I thank you everybody for for being here and uh, giving uh, giving their valuable time. I thank you everybody for uh, taking uh, uh, the, for taking their part to uh, to enrich our first ever sourcing fair. Uh, this is a uh, part of the sourcing fair. So uh, uh, I. I, I sincerely express my gratitude to you all. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, thank you, Mr. Rahman, for sharing your remarks with us. And I'm hopeful that the uh, stakeholders have uh, taken some notes from today's webinar and the information shared uh, through today's webinar. And it will definitely provide them some food for thoughts to overcome the barriers and move forward. I thank all the participants for being with us. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Thank, uh, thanks to the keynote speaker and all the panelists for being with us. Please be safe and take care. Assalamu alaikum. Bye. Okay. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. I hope we can uh, leave. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Allah Hafiz. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Mahfuz, thank you, bye. Yes, yes, Hello, Chilo. Mr. Mehta, thank you. Thank you. It was excellent and we should meet up someday, soon. Okay. I am in school I am 98 batch, 96 batch at Government Lab. I am in SSC. HSC was 98. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Chilo. To be specific and focused. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we're going to share it. Yeah.